What is going on everybody and welcome to a quick mini series on web scraping with Beautiful Soup 4. So by no means are we going to cover everything you can do with Beautiful Soup, but we're going to cover some of the more common use cases. Before we go any further, I do encourage you to check out the documentation for Beautiful Soup if what we cover here isn't quite what you were hoping for. Um, you can do a whole lot of stuff with this, so we're really just going to be scratching the surface here. Now, uh, moving this aside, to get Beautiful Soup, uh, the first thing you'll need to do is uh, pip install beautiful soup4. And I already have it, so that's fine. Also, you may need to do pip install lxml. And we have that already as well. So uh, make sure you have those two things. As long as you do, you're good to go. So to begin, I have set up a sample page on pythonprogramming.net for us to work with. I'll put, again, the link in the description. If I forget, someone remind me. And also, sample code is always posted on pythonprogramming.net. So uh, this is just a quick sample page with some text, a list, a table, a picture, and um, the Zen of Python. So moving this over, that's the link that we're going to use. Again, you just go to the description. It's also just parse me, make parse face. <laughs> you see what I did there. OK, so <laughs> anyway, no one's left. Import BS4 as BS. Um, this is because basically this way you can kind of look at old code. And over time, this will be still useful because in the past it was BS3. Anyway, BS. Now we're also going to import urllib.request just so we can actually make a request. So now the source or sauce, as the in crowd calls it, is going to be URL lib dot request dot URL open. And we want to open that link. So for me, that's Python programming dot net slash parse me make parse face. Going to get sued for trademark. OK, dot read. OK, so that's the source. Now, anytime you have source code, so like when, when we view that page, basically it's just returning the source code. So all this and not necessarily as pretty as, as this is. So, um, so that's the source code. And then we can turn it into a beautiful soup object by saying following soup equals BS dot capital B E A U T I F U L capital S soup. What do we pass through the sauce? And you can just say that, but we'll also go ahead and be explicit about the parser that we want to use. We want to use that LXML. There's also like HTML5 lib that you could use, but LXML we're going to use. So um, cool. So first, let's go ahead and like let's just look. Like what are we dealing with right now? So save and run that. So as you can see, it's just it's just the HTML basically as we would expect it. Um, we're looking at it now, and it doesn't really look too much different than if we were to print the source. So sauce. Okay, so this one's a little, a little messier. We've got the tabs and the new lines actually. So anyway, but it looks very similar. I guess really is like this, right? Um, so the soup looks more like what we're seeing in the browser. Anyway, it turns it into a beautiful soup object, which then lets us actually interact with the soup. That's the whole point of doing that. So I'm going to stop printing the sauce. So one thing we can do is we could do something really simple like print soup.title. And this gives us the title of the document. So in this case, the title was Python programming tutorials. Uh, the other thing we can do, like if you want like soup.title, you can get uh, like the name from the tag. So that's the title tag. No doubt. <laughs> but you can also do like string and get the uh, string version there. So Python programming tutorials. So and, and we're going to talk a little bit uh, dot text should also work. And we'll talk about this in the next tutorial, I think. Yeah. So those two will work and we'll explain in the next tutorial <laughs> what the difference is. So there's that. And then we can also do um, the following. So we can get like specific values like print soup.p. Now this is just going to print the first kind of paragraph element, but let's do it. So you get that first, okay, it's a paragraph class introduction. Oh, hello, this is a blah, 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 blah. Okay. But we can also do something like this. We can say print uh, soup.find all 
and then P for paragraph tags. So now we should find all of the paragraph tags. So we did. So we found a whole bunch of extra information. And really, this page doesn't really have too many paragraph tags. So it's just like a sample page. But if you did this on like um, a news website or something like that, you'd, you'd get substantially more, more information. Uh, I'm trying to find my mouse. There it is. OK. So there's that. And then also, you can instead, you could do something like this. Let's actually, we'll comment this page. There that out. So instead, we could say for paragraph in soup dot find all p. So for each paragraph, we could do something like this. We could print uh, the paragraph like this. So we'll just do that for now. But in most cases, you, you actually don't want the tag, right? So, you know, you could use regular expressions or something and get rid of it, um, just like you could use regular expressions to parse all this stuff. But in this case, we can do dot uh, string, for example. And you'll see that we actually got just a couple strings, but we're missing some things. And it appears that they're being returned as none. This is because um, dot string returns a navigable string as opposed to dot text, which is just going to return regular old Unicode. So this rule will actually return everything that you wanted, but it's not going to like basically the navigable string will only work if you don't have um, child tags inside of it. So these first two had child tags. This one just didn't have any children tags. So and by child tags, just in case anybody is uh, not following that, if we go up to here, <clears throat> Um, oh, hello, this is a wonderful page. You can see a wonderful looks slightly different. You might not be able to tell on video, but it is. And I can just do search real quick. And we can see that actually this has a, like basically this paragraph tag has a child tag within it that is a span. It also has some strong tags. Anyway, in most cases, you're really just gonna want, not Texas, <laughs> text. <laughs> Maybe Texas, nothing against Texas. Okay, so um, yeah. So that's your paragraph text. Now, there is one more thing that you can do, like when you have an entire document, rather than just going through and finding the paragraph tags um, and then getting the text in between them, you can do something like um, print soup.getText. And while we're doing that, let's just comment these lines out. <clears throat> okay, so here you get basically all of the text that's found on this. And you'll see that also we picked up the Zen of Python text as well, because remember, well, you probably don't remember because you didn't write the page, but, but on this page, the Zen of Python is actually not in paragraph tags. It's encased in pre tags. It took a while to zoom. Anyway, it's encased in pre tags, not paragraph tags. So there are going to be times where you're not going to get the paragraph um, data. I've even seen some websites that don't even use paragraph tags. They use span tags. So, <laughs> so don't think that you're all, always going to get away with like parsing for paragraphs. Okay, so there's that. Um, aside from like finding all the paragraphs, another thing that you can do is find all of the links. So for example, you might say for URL in soup in soup.findall and we're going to look for all h or a tags and then we can say print uh, well to start we could print url um, and let's just print that out just to see what we got okay so we get the entire tag as we've been seeing basically every time and so you might think okay here's what i'll do i'll do dot text because i'm a smart cookie and then you find out, oh shoot, no, that doesn't work because that's the text of the tag. So instead what you'll do is url.get and we want to get the reference. So href there, boom. Now you have your actual links. Okay, so here you go. Okay, so those are just some, some quick basics of Beautiful Soup. That might actually be enough for you at this point, but if it's not, in the next tutorial, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some more slightly advanced features of Beautiful Soup and kind of navigating around because, especially if paragraph data is not the only thing that you want. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial.